Hey everyone, we're going to be installing this uh, Hopkins flex mount trailer brake controller in uh, 2017 GMC Acadia SLT2 with the factory 7 uh, pin harness uh, with uh, the pigtail already ready underneath the dash. So I'll show you where I install it. So what I've gone ahead and done is actually removed the inner console kick panel on the driver's side and what we're, we need to do is actually install this smart hub. Uh, this is what sh the brake controller, the, the manual brake override plugs into as well as the display and then lastly the car wiring harness. So with this particular model you have to have this installed in a specific orientation so we have to have it either installed on the inner console or on the, the outside outside kick panel. So what I've done is I've uh, chosen to go on the inside and to make it as discreet as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually have it mounted right in this open space. Uh, and to do that, I'm actually going to go ahead and rivet this piece of uh, galvanized steel onto this structure bracket right here. So I'm going to quickly unbolt these three three uh, bolts, remove the tree clip on the one side, and then take this out and get it uh, screwed in and riveted to this, this piece. So I've taken the uh, structural bracket out of the vehicle that's holding the dash, and I actually made a couple markings on here just so I know roughly the angle. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that placed on there, drill a couple holes, put a rivet in, and then I kind of come back and see if we have the holes line up for this guy to have them riveted on as well. So it's actually pretty promising. Looks like we already have some holes ready. So I really could not have had that go any better in my favor. So I drilled three holes onto the structural bracket. And then this, uh, this plate typically used on decking, uh, the holes actually lined up perfectly, so I had was able to get four rivets in without having to drill any holes for this uh, smart module. So let's go ahead and get it back in the Acadia. Drilling the holes just helps me prevent uh, from over tightening these self tapping screws in the plastic. So we can uh, install it in this orientation or the opposite orientation, um, but for now I'm going to install it right like that, just clips in. Then I'm gonna run this wire, which has a, I can't remember the name of that,
but that is actually going to plug into the smart controller that we installed in the kick panel. Next up we got this uh, brake controller display. So this is going to show your output of the controller itself. Uh, it'll show you the sensitivity and the gain settings as you set them on your on your manual controller. Um, this here doesn't come with any sort of uh, hardware, I should say. Uh, it only comes with the adhesive option. Uh, so I'm going to opt to install it uh, just inside the inner dash here and to the best of my ability to get it at a flat spot. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, copy the routing path of the wire down underneath the dash and across to the uh, smart hub uh, installed in the kick plate. So there we have it. We got the uh, smart controller installed. We got the two uh, secondary auxiliary devices, the, the manual brake controller as well as the display plugged in so you can just barely see those two connectors and then we still have this main wiring harness that we're going to work on here now so if you've ever uh wondered about the wiring harness on the 2017 and probably up newer styles of the acadia um if if you've ever ever uh looked for the wiring harness oftentimes the the Everyone online will say, look in the, the driver's kick panel next to the emergency brake. Um, funny enough, this is an electric emergency brake, so don't look down here. Um, and anyone on e-trailer, e don't listen to them because they're going to tell you to look over here. you got to look the center console above the gas pedal, and you're going to see a small bundle of wires. In this case here, it's going to be two blue wires a white and blue wire and a black wire so um, funny enough in the user manual it actually has a blue wire which is going to go to the trailer a red slash black or a red slash blue which is the battery feed and then a white blue which is our brake apply signal and then the black which is the ground so let's go ahead and figure out which uh, of these two blue wires which are solid no 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 uh no wrap around them let's figure out which one is the battery feed and which one goes to the trailer so we can get this hooked up to our main module controller. So a real simple test. Uh, on a brake controller, they should have uh, direct battery readings. So easy enough, let's uh, hook up a multimeter to the a suitable ground, which I got. And then also let's just probe the end of the wires. So let's check this first wire, see if I can do this one-handed. That's still reading millivolts, so not that one. This one here, 12.6. There, there we go. That's our that's our power wired to battery. So, according to the user manual, that's that would be our uh, let's call it red blue. So to make things easier, I've gone ahead and gone into the Acadia's user manual, found the electric trailer brake control wiring provision information, as well as uh, utilizing the installation manual from the brake controller from Hopkins itself. And simply so I don't get confused while I'm doing the wiring and I don't have to keep thinking about it back and forth here, I've gone ahead and noted uh, the, the wiring for the to the trailer, to the battery, to the brake apply signal and the ground, as well as you see it nice small writing on this guy here as well and I've simply uh, written it down myself so the blue to blue on the brake controller in Acadia blue as well as uh, I put a little piece of black tape around it on the Acadia side to the black on the brake controller the white blue brake signal to the red brake signal on the trailer or the brake controller as well as the black ground of the Acadia to the white ground of the brake controller so Let's go ahead and get that wired up.
we've gone ahead and left the uh, power lead to the, to the battery last, so no need to connect that or insert that just yet. Let's go ahead and uh, get this funnel back up. All we gotta do is put on the re-put the kick panel back in, and then uh, I'll show you the, the controller itself. Never know there was a freaking solution cell behind here. All right, so we're uh, we're done installed. Um, you can see it's as I'm sitting here in the driver's seat. It's super easy to grab this uh, manual override, and I can easily see the display. So uh, right now I do not have any battery or not battery. I don't have any uh, trailer connected to the vehicle right now, so I'm gonna do that uh, tomorrow. But if there was a battery connected, I would see a small red dot in here. Uh, if there was any sort of wiring incorrect, I would see an SC on here for short circuit. And then, uh, so right now I'm seeing a blank screen, which means uh, no no uh, trailer is connected. So if you do have a trailer connected, you wanna make sure that you see something there. Um, so on the very top here, you'll see I can click the negative, negative left and positive right. And that will change my power settings on this uh, controller, as well as on the bottom here in, in this in particular orientation, I have uh, uh, an S and that is the sensitivity of the controller. So it goes all the way one through seven and uh, repeats. So depending on your trailer application, you're gonna have this set to a certain level. And then this here, once again, is your manual power uh, override. So I can simply take this and slide it across and you can see it will go all the way up uh, to 99% on the uh, scale here. So 
real simple uh great great trailer uh, controller so far as far as the install goes uh, haven't tested it haven't trailered with it yet so let's uh let's hope it is is a good one so on uh, a scale of one to ten as far as the install goes i'd probably put this at like a, a four a pretty pretty simple to install uh just a matter of getting the wires correctly routed as well as wired up to the factory harness um, so if it, if no one's ever done anything like that, it's it's a little more challenging. But for like uh, I'm a little more uh, comfortable with it, so I'd uh, put it on the easier side of a complicated job. So thanks uh, thanks for watching, everyone.